Yeah, go past. I, I've, this is eight, number eight church that I've started. I've been ministry for, <coughs> in ministry for decades. I'm not trying to be ugly, but I'm telling you the, the absolute facts. <laughs> I, I'm not telling you the truth. I'm telling you the facts. This is the truth. I've had literally dozens and probably hundreds at this point after 25 plus years of ministry. Oh, God's called me to work with you. And a week later, they're gone. Come up, just hug my neck. Oh, Pastor, and literally kiss me. You're the greatest minister I've ever seen. You're, you just have blessed my life. And three weeks later, be dragging me all over town cussing. You, can't, you cannot depend on the flesh of other people to make you happy. Look at me. Look, everybody looking, Pastor. If you're waiting for people to sustain you, satisfy you, encourage you and build you up and we're called to do that don't get me wrong but if you're if your boldness and your consciousness of god's love depends on somebody else being faithful to their ministry to encourage you you're gonna fall amen amen you gotta know it between you and god so that when they do kiss you one day and do a judas on you the next week yes. you're still confident god loves me hallelujah i'm before God. Hallelujah. My faith still works. No matter how flaky people get around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even up with your family. Good word. Good word. Hallelujah. 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 If your joy is in how somebody else's countenance is toward you, Amen. you'll never stay in joy. Amen. Amen. If your joy is based on how somebody responds to you, you'll You'll be a double-minded man, unstable in all your ways, getting nothing from the kingdom of yes. God from now until the rapture. Yes. Your joy, your completeness, your boldness, your confidence, your faith has to be in Christ and Christ alone, in the Word and the Word only. Amen. It's the only thing that can turn your life around. Amen. The only thing that can bring you to the level of life that Christ died for. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the only way you'll ever be a good minister. If you're moved by the faces of people, you'll never preach with a spit in the kingdom of God. you got to read this Bible. These apostles said, am I supposed to please you, king? You look at the king face to face. Am I supposed to please you or God? I'll answer that for you. I'm going to please God. Do whatever you want. If you worry about what people, governments, and businesses think of your Christianity and, mm -hmm. and your faith, you'll never do nothing for God and you'll never get the blessing God wants for you. Mm -hmm. You can't be a bold Christian and call down the promises of God and afraid to proclaim Jesus in public. Amen. It doesn't work. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Man, that's good preaching. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost is wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Then you look at somebody and say, your faith works. Thank you. Your faith works. God loves you. God God loves you. It's time to get bold. It's time, time to get bold. bold. Hallelujah. That's what we're just saying. Yes. Amen. Your faith works. Faith works. God loves me. God loves me. And it's time to get bold. It's time to get bold. Whining's not bold. Whining's not bold. Whining's not bold. Whining's bold. Proclaiming the word without fear or condemnation is bold. Hallelujah. 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 Give it a prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Alright. So if our hearts do not condemn us, watch, this is powerful. You gotta get this. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, verse 21. Then have we confidence toward God. Now here's the important part of no condemnation and confidence toward God. And whatsoever, verse 22, 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. What's His commandment now? Not the ten. See, that's where your righteousness gets off. Yes. And we're going to look at that very closely today. If we keep His commandments and do what's right. But He ain't talking about the Ten Commandments. 
Jesus brought the Ten Commandments down to two. What were they? Hallelujah. Liz? To love your love God with all your heart, your mind, and soul. And your yep. neighbor as yourself. And number two is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as you love. Here's the commandments. Keep the commandments. Walk in love. Toward God and everybody. Amen. You can't love God and walk in love because you're wife. You can't you cannot love God and walk in love that causes you to be a keeper of all the commandments. Look, look. Here, what, what do you mean by that, Pastor? This is it. Are you ready? If I love Darlene, I'm not going to steal from her. Thou shalt not steal. If I love Darlene, I'm not going to go to work and tell everybody what a rotten individual my wife is. Very false witness. Because that would be a false witness because she's not rotten. Mm -hmm. She's righteous and holy and loving and caring and beautiful. Uh, listen, world. She's perfect. With whatever fall you still have to have in the flesh before glory, I can't find it. She's perfect. She loves God. She loves the Word. She preaches. She proclaims. She shares. She witnesses. She lays hands on the sick. She prays for me. She loves me. She encourages me. She feeds me. She takes care of my needs. She's perfect. So for me to go to work and everybody sitting around talking about their wives, and it's popular to do. Well, I tell you, she just nags me. Oh, yeah. Women just don't know. That would be bearing false witness. That'd be breaking a commandment. Yeah. If I love Darlene, I'm not going to steal her stuff. I'm not going to lie lies about her. If I love Darlene, I'm not going to lust for another another woman. Thou shalt not commit adultery. See, so if I love you, I'm going to keep the commandments without even looking at the commandments. Amen. Right. Are you getting this? Hallelujah. That's what he's talking about here. Yes. That's what he's talking about right here. And whatsoever we ask, we receive. It means anything you pray for, you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. When you're not praying through a condemned, beat down, faithless heart. Mm -hmm. The only way you can get that is understanding deeply and immovably, immovably, <laughs> your righteousness. Hallelujah. Everybody's got that in salvation. Yes, after Jesus. after a, a, few, a few weeks, maybe a couple of months, you, you walk. I can walk up to any of you on the street and say, "Jordan, are you sure you're saved?" Yes. Nobody's going to answer. Well, I don't know. I thought I was. Maybe I'm not. Mm -hmm. Once you've been doing this for a few months, there's not even a devil in hell can say you're not saved. Oh, shut up! I know I'm saved. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely sure that you're sure that you're sure you're saved. Not a devil in hell can ever talk you out of it. And you get offended when any, if anybody even insinuated you weren't saved. Mm -hmm. yes. True? True. That's exactly the level you got to get in your righteousness. Mm -hmm. Some of this is just taught to most Christians. But it's your absolute necessity absolute. for survival. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolute necessity for survival. Look at somebody say righteousness. Righteousness, righteousness is mine. Is is mine. mine. Righteousness, righteousness is mine. Is mine. Is mine. In Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Very quickly. Amen. First Corinthians chapter one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I broke my watch, got all Pentecostal. What time is it? <laughs> Thank you. That's all I need to know. First Corinthians chapter 1, look at verse 30 very quickly. But of Him, say amen when you're there. Amen. Hallelujah. Wait just a minute. We're not in that big a hurry. I don't want to leave any of my brothers and sisters behind. How do I get righteous? How do I get righteousness? We looked at this last week. Are you ready? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and Corinthians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. Praise but of Him, God, are you in Christ? You know it was God's idea to save you in the first place. Hallelujah. Did you know that? 
While I was yet a sinner, Christ was sent to die for me. It wasn't on my agenda to get saved and go to heaven. It was God's idea. Hallelujah. While I was yet a sinner, He didn't want to live without me. While I was fornicating, chasing women, drinking alcohol, fighting and cussing and spitting, God said, I still want it. Oh, hallelujah. While I didn't have the sense God gave a beaver, I, was, I lost in my sins and wasn't looking for the light. God was looking for me. Look at somebody say, it's God's idea you got eternal life. It's God's idea you got saved. It's God who it's God sought you out. It's God who sacrificed for you. It's God who gave everything for you. While you had nothing and could do nothing, God gave you Christ and everything in Him. And that's what it means that you're. it's of Him that you're in Christ. All oh, praise and glory go to the Father of life and the God of love. You didn't do one slap silly thing to get found by Christ. And I'll tell you the truth. You just didn't wake up with some revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord and I must know Him. Some obedient, bold, uncondemned child of God came and told you about Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 It's of God that you're saved. It's of God that you're sitting in church loving the Word of God. It's His plan that you're sitting here right now. It was His heart that started all this. It was His power that brought it to pass. It was His Spirit that drew you into the life. It's of God that you're in Christ. Thank you. And all his work and all his love and all his might got you here. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the only thing you had the good sense to do was just say, Yes, Lord, I believe it. <laughs> and that opened all of heaven to you. Jesus, Lord. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This good preaching, Pastor. Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate that. You're encouraging me. Good preacher for a white boy. Thank you, Brother Ken. I appreciate that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you like preaching the empty chairs. Some of you haven't grunted or groaned once, just staring at me like an Easter egg. It's all right. Just going to get down in that shell. Get down in that shell. Are you ready? But of Him, who's Him? Jesus, I just spent five minutes under the Holy Ghost telling you about Him. You're in Christ. Christ. Who's Him? Jesus. Liar! Come! Some of you are just a challenge to boldness. Say amen. 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 Say it loud enough that the church mouse can hear you. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 Of Him are you in Christ. Of God. Who of God is made unto us. God made us in Christ and then turned around and gave Christ us in wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. All this is of God. Christ in us and the wisdom and the sanctification and the justification and the righteousness of Christ in us is all God's doings. Hallelujah. Did you see that? So look at somebody say, your righteousness, your righteousness is from God, is from God, God, by, God by God, through God, through, God, through, God, through, Christ, through Christ, and not by your greatness. And not, not by your greatness. And not by your weakness. And not by your weakness. See, well, your do's and your don'ts and your ups and your downs don't have a single slap silly thing to do with your righteousness. Amen. It's of God. God gave it, and God's not an Indian giver. He did more than give it, and we'll look at that just in just a second. Amen? Amen. Isn't this good stuff? Good. Yeah. Isaiah 32. 